Hi guys, so for today's discussion, we are talking about forecasting. Now, we have the quantitative approaches to forecasting. The first one is the naive approach. Second is the moving average. Third is exponential smoothing. Fourth is trend projection. And the last one is linear regression. Now, for the first four method so these are called the time series models and then the last one is called the associative model now for part one the naive approach we have three types the first one is a stable series now as definition a stable series shows variations around an average and the last data point becomes the forecast for the next period. So basically, uh, if the forecast for the data is stable or falls under the stable series, ibig sabihin, the data sets are very close with each other. And the forecast for the next period is just the same as the value of the previous period. Now, the second um, approach or the second type is a seasonal variation. So the forecast for this season is equal to the value of the series last season. Now, how do we know if the, uh, the forecast will fall under a seasonal type? So if you observe the data and nakita nyo na meron mga peak values, so ibig sabihin meron siyang or the values are seasonal. So usually, uh, ito ay yung mga values that appear uh, on a uh, fixed interval. Like for example, every week, nag iba iba yung values or every 3 months, every 5 months, and so on. So later, we'll show in the examples given. Now, for the third type, so trend naman yung tinatawag for the last type under the naive approach. Now, the forecast is equal to the last value of the series plus or minus the difference between the last two values of the series. Now, how do we know if the forecast is trend? So, if you observe closely the data, so makita nyo naman kung yung data ba natin is continuously uh, tumataas or bumababa. So, usually, we observe this trend or this behavior sa last few values of the data set. So, from there, you will know kung i-add or i-minus nyo siya depending on the trend. So, definitely, if your trend is increasing, so we are going to add the difference. And then, if the trend is decreasing or pababa siya, so we are going to get the uh, the difference or minus yung gagamitin natin uh, to include the difference between the last two values of the series. Now, take note that the difference we're talking about here is the absolute difference of the last two values of the series. Now, let's proceed with the example. Now, for the following data, so the following data shows the daily sales in dozen for each of the three products of a commercial bakery. So, determine the forecast for the 12th day using naive approach. Now, on our data set, so we have three types of products for the bakery. So, we have cookies, muffin, and then the cakes. Now, si naive approach, you don't need to do anything but just observe and look closely at the given data values. Now, uh, again, you must observe the given data set. And looking at the data for cookies, so we can see that the values are relatively close. So we can assume that the series is stable. Again, we can only say or we can only assume that the series is stable if magkakalapit yung values ng data set natin. So ibig sabihin... Uh, since the last value is 17, so based on definition, so the forecast for the 12th day is also 17. Next, so for the muffin naman, so observe the data for muffin. So the values are similar with cookies, but there is a distinction. So which is the last four values are increasing, so we can assume that this is trend. Again, uh, if you look at the values, so kung ang kanyang behavior for the last few data 
is either uh, pataas or pababa. So, we can say na trend siya. So, unlike kasi si Cookies, medyo parang erratic yung behavior niya. However, the values are relatively close with each other. So, kaya siya stable. And then, for the last uh, product, which is yung cakes. So, again, you can observe that merong mga instances na lumalaki yung value which can be noted in day 4 where they have 25 dozens of orders of cakes and then on day 8 may 28 siya so we can clearly say na nagpipik yung kanyang orders every 4 days so yun yung pinaka uh, observation kasi for the other day so you can see naman from days 1 to 3 so parang normal yung value and then pagdating sa day 4 biglang tumaas then day 5 biglang bumaba siya ulit and then mababa pa rin siya and then uh, on day 8 biglang tumaas na naman siya so nasa line of 2 yung values natin so kaya seasonal yung ating series Okay, so let's see the answers. So, for our cookies, so since it is stable, so yung forecast on uh, day 12 is the same as the value for uh, day 11 kasi nga stable tayo. So, ang ating sagot ay 17. So, 17 dozens of cookies. Uh, is projected to be sold on day 12. Now, dun naman tayo kay Muffin. So, kay Muffin, so ang sabi, <clears throat> trend ito. Kasi we can see that on the last 4 days, from 19, naging 20, naging 22, and then naging 23 siya. So, ibig sabihin, pataas yung value natin. So, yung forecast on day 12, based on the formula, based on the definition, yun daw yung last um, value of the previous day, plus, plus, kasi nga, trend tayo na increasing, the absolute difference between the previous two values or the last two values in the data. So, which is 23 minus 22, which is obviously 1. So, therefore, the forecast for day 12 is 24 dozens of muffin is projected to be sold. Then, finally, for the cakes, so, yung ating forecast on the on the 12th day, kasi nga, ang ating seasons can be found on day 4, on day 8. So, every 4 days siya. And ang sabi, kapag seasonal yung ating series, so, we only copy or the same value of the last season yung forecast. So, since 28 yung value of the last season, so yung ating forecast for the 12th day is also 28. So, these are 28 dozens of cakes naman is projected to be sold on the 12th day. Okay, so now we can move to the second part of our discussion. So, part 2 is our averaging technique. So, we have three, again, for this um, type or for this approach. The first one is moving average. So, by definition, this averages a number of recent actual values updated as new values become available. So, ang ibig sabihin lang nito, so, we basically get the average of a given set of values given or kung ano yung hinihingi or kung ano yung given na number of periods to be included. So, it can be a 5-period moving average, it could be a 3-period moving average, and so on. So, ang tatandaan lang is that when we use averaging techniques, so we always make use of the most recent values. Next is the weighted moving average. So, this is similar with the moving average, only that there are weights involved. So, as definition, so this is used when some trend might be present. 
and weights are based on experience and intuition. So take note that most recent values are given more weight in computing a forecast. So do not forget this one. So your weights can be given as a percentage. So it can be equal to 1 kapag sinam natin. Or your weights can be given as a whole number. So depende siya sa, prob- uh, sa problem. But take note na kahit nakajumble yung mga weights natin, the heaviest weight is always assigned to the most recent value or to the most recent uh, data in our given problem. Okay? So, for the formula, so basically, it's just the same as getting the average, only that there are weights involved. So, in this case, so this is just the summation of getting the the product between the weight and the uh, the actual value for period I and then all over the sum of our weights. And then the third type is the exponential smoothing. So this is a method based on previous forecast plus a percentage of the forecast error. So we have the following formula. So you have F sub D minus 1 plus alpha times the quantity a sub d minus 1 minus f sub d minus 1. So, where your f sub d minus 1 is your previous forecast, and then a sub d minus 1 is your previous actual demand or data. And then finally, we have your alpha, which is the smoothing constant. So, it can range uh, from 0 to 1. So, it, it's between 0 and 1. Now, take note that low values of alpha are used if the average tends to be stable and high values is used if the average is susceptible to change. So, basically, so if your data or sure kayo na stable naman yung, yung demand ninyo na hindi siya nagka-fluctuate, so you can use low values of alpha. Now, if medyo, uh, let's say, bago pa yung product or bago pa yung uh, yung mina market nyo and di pa kayo sure sa magiging uh, projections niya so you can use a higher value of alpha so now let's proceed with our example so for example 1 under moving average so compute for a 3 period moving average forecast for the given data below so we have 6 periods or actually five periods where we are given the following demand. So since missing yung value for period 6, so we can say that the forecast for period 6 is missing. Now take note that we are uh, instructed to solve using a three-period moving average. So we can use uh, a code or let's say uh, pinakita lang sa problem yung code. So usually ito yung itsura niyan. So, MA sub 3 to represent a 3-period moving average. Now, kapag sinabing 5-period moving average, so MA sub 5 lang. So, if you ever um, encounter problems just using this code, so automatically this is uh, a moving average. Now, for our solution, again, we have the following data. So, since we are to compute for uh, the forecast for period 6, so we can just write F6. And then, ang sabi, 3 period moving average. So, since um, ang base sa definition, we always use the most recent data. So, the last 3 values will be used in getting the forecast for period 6 so which is from period 5 4 and then 3 so laging paakyat yung pag uh, pagtingin dun sa data so ito yung ating gagamitin na mga values to compute for the forecast on the 6th period so that is simply 41 plus 40 plus 43 so, take note na yung, pag, yung way na pagsusulat ko is from period 5 and up. So, since tatlo to, so yung usual way of getting the average, so we'll just uh, divide this by 3. So, the answer for this one is 41.33. 
So usually we keep the the original value pero sometimes ni round uh, off nila ito. So if round off natin siya to uh, the of to a whole number, so it's just 41 or 41, okay? Now let's see another example. So paano naman if we are to use a 4 period moving average. So, kung 4 period moving average, again, so from uh, period 5, pataas kay uh, period 2. So, medyo nag lang siya. So, itong apat na yan yung ating gagamitin. So, yung F6 is again 41, 40, 43, and then 40, then again, divide by 4. Kasi 4 periods na yung ating kinamit. So, the answer is 41. Okay, so. Alright, so let's proceed with another example. So, this is now under the weighted moving average. Now, compute for the weighted or compute the weighted average forecast using the following weights 0 0.3 0 0.2 0 0.4 and 0 0.1 for the given data set so for our solution again so your number of weights will determine how many periods are to be considered so if ang weights na given ko ay apat like in this example ibig sabihin four periods ang iko consider natin now, kung tatlo lang yung weight, so ibig sabihin, tatlo lang yung periods na i-consider natin. Now, do take note again na ang mga weights natin, so the heaviest weight is always assigned to the most recent value. Now, as our solution, sorry, so ang solution natin, so F6 pa rin ang hinahanap. So, F6, so, weighted sum lang naman ito. So, 0.4 is the most or the heaviest weight. So, 0.4 times yung pinaka-recent which is 41 plus 0.3. Uh, the next most recent is 40 plus 0.2 times 43 plus yung ating 0.1 times 40. Now, if you remember the formula from the previous slide, so ito ay i-divide daw sa sum of the weights. Pero take note na obvious naman na kapag sinam ko yung weights equal siya sa 1. So, kaya there is no need to get uh, the uh, the value dun sa ilalim. Pero, if your weights is given or are given uh, as a whole number, so you always have to uh, use that denominator or yung divider natin sa ilalim. Okay? So, dito, dahil medyo malit yung space natin, so, hindi ko na in-include yung over 1. So, so, solving this one will give you an answer of so, this is equivalent to 41. So, 41 pa rin yung sagot using this uh, method. Okay, so for the last example, number 3, so this is for exponential smoothing. So, medyo mahaba ito kasi mahaba yung formula niya. And uh, for each uh, period, so meron tayong sagot. Now, prepare a forecast using exponential smoothing with a smoothing constant of 0.4 given the following data. So, we have 6 periods again. Pero ang ating kinocompute or yung kailangan kong i-forecast is the value for period 6. Now, if you remember the formula, so we have two variables that you need to know, which is yung previous forecast and your previous actual. So, let's just use those terms. Previous actual and previous forecast. And then, we have the smoothing constant. Now, let's solve this example. Now, dito sa ating uh, given, so baka magtanong kayo, nas ano yung ibig sabihin ng previous forecast? Kasi 
Nag-forecast pa lang tayo para tayo magkakaroon ng previous forecast. Now, take note that forecasts for the first period is always given. However, if hindi given yung forecast in the problem, so we just copy the actual value for the first period as the forecast for the second period. So, ganun daw yung ibig sabihin nun. Na kumbaga, we leave the first Uh, the forecast for period 1 as blank and then yung forecast for the second period is just the actual value for the first period right okay so again do take note of that uh, important detail now let's go or proceed with our solution now ang sabi we need to include a forecast column here. However, in our given information, uh, walang binanggit dun sa problem that the forecast for, for period 1 is this. So, wala. So, we leave this blank and then, ang sabi dun sa important detail is that kapag nangyari yun, so we just copy uh, the actual value from the first period, so which is 60. So, yun da yung magiging forecast for the second period. And then, uh, the third period going to the sixth period, which is yung hinihingi or hinahanap natin. So, we'll just apply the formula. Now, meron ding uh, simple technique dito para lagi nyo siyang matandaan. So, again, uh, yung formula, lagay ko lang dito sa ilalim. Ang formula daw, yung forecast is... Sanin ko lang yung gumuguhit siya. Yan. So, yung forecast daw is your previous forecast plus alpha and then ito yung formula minus your previous forecast. Now, if if we will be using the same formula or this formula, may technique dyan mamaya para hindi tayo mali dito. So, for the forecast of period 3, so, ang previous forecast ko ay 60. So, which is 60 plus yung alpha ko of 0.4. And then, yung actual minus forecast is simply yung magkatapat, which is 65 and yung 60. So, 65 minus 60. And then, we have the forecast for period 3. Now, careful on this method kasi isang mali mo lang sa isang period will definitely affect your final answer. So, the answer for this one is 62. So, next period for period 4. So, again, previous forecast. So, ang forecast na nakumpil natin ay 62. So, copy lang, 62. Plus, again, 0.4. And then, ngayon, ang magkatapat na. So, si 55 and then si 62. So, in our solution... So, it is 55 minus 62. So, ganun lang. So, may, may, ano na siya, parang may visual technique na tayo. So, the answer here is 59.2. So, again, for period 5, we just copy our previous answer. 59.2 plus 0.4. Again, our smoothing constant this time, so, ang magkatapat naman is yung 58 and yung 59.2. So, 58 minus 59.2. So, the answer is 58.72. So, and then finally, for the sixth period, so, kopihin natin si 58. 0.72 plus 0.4 Yan again na magkatapat ay si 64 na minus 58.72 and the final answer is 60 so I'll just write here na ubusan ako na space 60.83 and this serves as our final answer now question 
can I compute for the forecast for period 7? Definitely not. Kasi, bakit? Uh, dahil, wala lang tayong actual forecast or actual value for the 6th period. So, kumbaga, uh, si exponential smoothing, so, pang ano lang siya, one period ahead of uh, the data set. So, if you are given 10 uh, data set, so hanggang period 11 lang. However, there could be other or there are other uh, forecasting methods that you can use to project for uh, longer periods. Pero syempre, with caution yung paggamit nun, which will be discussed on our next part. So, this concludes the first part of forecasting. So, again, just to review, we covered the naive approach, the three types of naive approach, and the three types of the uh, averaging techniques. Alright? So, I will see you again on our next module. Again, do not forget to comment kung meron kayo mga questions. And I'll be gladly uh, be answering those questions. Uh, kung meron kayong nalito or you want to clarify some things, so you can always comment down below. So, thank you again for watching!